Welcome back. As I mentioned, Ken Langone is with me today as our special guest host on The Closing Bell. Big developments today in the fiscal cliff. The president now changing who he considers wealthy to those earning $400,000 a year, not $250,000. Speaker Boehner is threatening to uh, a plan B to avoid the cliff with a vote on raising rates on only those making more than a million dollars. But Kentucky Republican Senator Rand Paul says entitlement cuts, not tax hikes, should be the focus. Senator Paul, good to ha uh, have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be with you. Uh, well, I'm here with Ken Langone, uh, oh, yes, co-founder of Home Depot. We, we want to ask you about where you see things going. But first, give us your take on where these negotiations stand right now. What can you tell us? Well, you know, I think it's a really bad idea to raise taxes. We have a struggling economy, and I think we'll have the opposite effect. You know, I think the economy could become more sluggish with increasing taxes. You may get less revenue if you raise tax rates. That being said, I don't know where we are. No one's calling me up to give me any information on this. I'll find out. Uh, if you find out first, you call me, okay? Senator. But uh, we're not really part of the negotiations. That's being done by a couple of people. But I really think in the end, as Republicans, we need to continue standing for what we've always stood for, and that's that you stimulate the economy by leaving more money in the private sector. Well, what about Boehner's Plan B, Ken? Uh, well, let me go back to what Senator uh, Paul said. Look, in reality, I don't believe people making a million dollars in a year are going to do anything different in how they spend money if they pay more taxes. I just don't believe it. And I'm speaking well, I don't to you think it, I think that what you mistake here is that it matters whose money it is. Now, that's sort of a pejorative or a moralistic way of looking at it. The economy doesn't care whether rich people have it, middle income people, or poor people have it. The economy cares whether the money is in the efficient sector, which is the private sector, right, but or whether you give it to second, government. The not going so it's, it's inefficient Senator. or a bad use of money to take money out of the private sector, no matter whether you're taking it from rich people, middle class, or mm. poor people. It's just a bad idea. Senator, with all due respect, our taxes are going to go up. They have to go up. Like it or not, what I'm saying is a person making a million dollars will pay the higher tax and will still spend as much money. I, I think the, the well, issue is... I'll give is you examples of where it has made a difference. You know, we went after to punish rich people several years ago with a special tax on yachts. What happened is the rich did change their habits. They went to the Caribbean and bought them from the Bahamas. And the people who lost their jobs are the people making $50,000 a year uh, selling, you know, and making the yachts. If a guy makes $35,000 a year selling Mercedes Benz and I make $250,000 a year, do you think I change my habit and wait another year to buy another Mercedes? That hurts the guy making $35,000. We're all interconnected. So it's the economy you're doesn't care effects. whether you're rich or right. poor. Uh, it's just less that. money in the productive sector. Sen well, Senator, I, I get that. I, and, and, and I think Ken is making the point that he doesn't necessarily expect major behavioral changes on the million dollar set. Of course not. But, but let me ask you this. Given the fact that we are eight days away from the end of the year, there are eight, day, eight trading days left till the end of the year until we go over the fiscal cliff. Given the fact that both sides are jigging in, the Dems do not want to cut enough on entitlements. The Republicans do not want to raise taxes. Isn't it time for something to give? I mean, seriously, well, let's be Senator, Let's be very clear with What are you willing the, to give? What are you willing very, to give on? Let's be very clear what the Democrats want to do on entitlements. The president said entitlements are off the table because we don't have enough time to do it. So they're not serious at all about that. I will compromise. I think we can compromise and look at military spending from the Republican side and say not every dollar spent is wise or sacred. Amen. I think we can also look at means testing. If the president says the rich are not paying their fair share, I'm all for means testing Social Security and means testing Medicare. But I will tell you that the leading Democrats in the Senate have said Social Security is not broken. They won't look at the age and they won't means test because they think these programs are not broken. That's how far apart we are and why it's trouble to find a compromise, because they don't think entitlements are broken. Will you go along with the speaker's plan B, and that is allow the 250, allow the $1 million and lower set to not see any tax increases, and then the others above a million will see their taxes raised, and then you'll deal with spending cuts later. This is your party, John Boehner's plan B. Are you going to go you, along with plan B if that's I what love it comes it. to? If you, if you separate the taxes into two different bills and let the Democrats have a tax increase basically on the upper side, I'll vote no, but they could still get what they want by separating the bill into two pieces. That may happen. 
but they've already out of hand dismissed the million dollar level. So we have to find a level that they won't dismiss. And I don't know how demanding they are because if they say 250 and we don't get to 250, then it's the, the Democrats that are unwilling to get, unless they get everything they want, it seems to me the intransigence is on their side then. Senator, I happen to think that the real issue is entitlements. What I think we need to do is get the issue of taxes off the table. Plan B sounds perfect to me because we're saying, hey, all right, let's take care of the people making 250 or less. Your life is not going to change at all. Now, what do you want to do, Mr. President? What do you want to do, Democrats? We will not well, address the serious. We will it, not it could address happen, but they've already dismissed it. I mean, Harry Reid said he won't vote for right. plan, vote, won't vote on Plan B, and so is the president. So it's kind of become a moot point. But I agree that there is a way you can bifurcate or have two different tax uh, votes and allow the Republicans still to vote no on these. The Democrats vote yes on one of them. The deadline expires, and the president gets what he wants, and we move on to other issues. Can there the is House, a way to, to let that happen. Yeah. Can the House of Representatives? Uh, pass a law, pass a bill that will protect the taxes of people at 250 and below. Uh, just the House. They can pass both of them. In fact, if they pass no, no, both of let's, them, let's just and then it goes to the law. Senate, it will fail in the Good. Senate. It'll fail. Good. It'll Hold it. Hold want. it. That's <laughs> what you want. Let them be in the position of not taking care of the people. All right, I'm so have the bill. I, I think Bain is you. on spot. John is once again showing his smarts. All right, we will. I agree there. with you. The only the only problem continues. is is that the million dollar cutoff the Democrats aren't uh, accepting. Separating it into two bills. Have work. two bills. Have two bills. Let's address the people, the little people, the the one the president keeps talking about. Okay. Right. They're now off the. Oh, we Why passed the bill. They won't pass it in the Senate. Why do I feel like I if agree. you had a business guy in these rooms, uh, two business guys, or a banker and a business guy, you would have this deal done in three seconds? Senator, good to have you on the program. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Senator. Thank Merry you. Christmas. We'll see you soon. We appreciate it. Meanwhile, this morning.